I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. Just click on the link in the description below or go to my website, AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about where does confidence come from? And we're talking about early confidence and we're talking about the whole story. That's that, right. That you don't always hear. Yes. One thing that you have to understand about people is that we actually kind of learn confidence in the first couple of years of our life. Yes. And whether you realize this or not, your parents help this, you know, you to learn confidence in even when you start walking for the first time. Absolutely. Because if your parents allow you to roam the environment, the house, walk around, toddle around, get some independence, you learn to be confident. Right. Now, if you have a mom that's hovering or is anxious and doesn't allow you to go anywhere or do anything, you don't learn to feel safe being independent. Right, exactly right. And that stuff happens so, so early that it's beyond when you even have any words. That's right. That's and right. so a lot of times your confidence has gone all the way back to early, early, early life and where you become securely attached, you become more confident and as an adult, you can handle situations. Right. right. Right? Because if you're not securely attached with your caregivers, you're insecurely attached. That's and right. And that's when you're going to have a whole lot of issues coming up. That's right. You, uh, you become either anxiously attached or you form an avoidant attachment style. And then there's the really challenging one. The disorganized style. I mm -hmm. love you today and I don't like you much tomorrow. Yes. Yes. And... It's hard for people to understand that it really does happen in those first few years of life. And I used to argue with you about it you for a long time. used to argue with me until he saw the light and gave up. It's true, though. <laughs> it took a long time for me to really see how the early stuff really affects mental health. Yes. And so today we're going to be talking about confidence and how to become more confident, more secure. Yes. Right? Yes, and I'm going to talk about some really abstract stuff that I hope makes sense. And if it doesn't make sense and you want to ask us more about that, please feel free to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, the genius who came up with this term um, was Mr. Bowlby, B-O-W-L-B-Y, an mm -hmm. absolute genius, mm -hmm. who wrote in the, from the 50s on, from the 1950s on. And he has done the basic work on human attachment. He started out by studying animal attachment. Mm -hmm. um, because whether, or know it, whether you know it or not, when ducks and geese hatch, they attach to the first moving thing they see as their mother. Yeah. And Mr. Bowlby went so far as to do some of that and to study some of that. Mm -hmm. And how much more delicate can it be for human babies? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to give you the definition of a secure base, which is what he says all of us need in this world. A secure base is provided through a relationship with one or more sensitive and responsive attachment figures. Mm -hmm. We hope that's the parents. Yep. Who meet the child's needs and to whom the child can turn as a safe haven when upset or anxious. And who of us doesn't look for our mommy in one form or another when we're very upset and anxious? Okay, now of course later in life it's not going to be your mother. It's probably going to be your partner, your friends, and other people that you're really close with. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, but first and foremost, it's our mothers. Yeah. When children develop trust in the availability and reliability of this relationship, their anxiety is, pr is reduced and they can therefore explore and enjoy their world. Like I was saying earlier, the safe, toddler of uh, right? toddling around the house. Safe in the knowledge that they can return to their secure base for help if needed. So that the mother and the toddling toddler, that's hard to say, are a perfect example. The kid will come and grab onto mom's knee 
and you know hug it for a while and interact with mom a bit and then go explore the room a little bit further yeah and he'll stay away for a while as long as he feels secure but when he runs out of fuel he'll come right back to get another dose of of comfort from mom yeah all right and I remember seeing many children who were in foster care in part of my career and one of the alarming things was if they would fall down and hurt themselves they wouldn't look for a secure base because they'd never had it. Wow. And I remember in my office one time this very cute little girl hit her head, she was trying to get under my desk and she hit her head on the desk and she fell to the floor and cried but never looked for me or her foster mother to comfort her. Mm -hmm. And that was very painful to watch because you could see she already didn't think the world was a safe or nurturing place that was going to fix it for her. Yeah. Okay. And you can imagine how she would be as an adult. Yes. How would she be able to trust her partner? It's she very wouldn't hard. feel safe being right. close to a partner. Right. Yeah. So if you have a secure attachment and it doesn't have to be perfect, there's another brilliant man who came along, that was Mr. Winnicott, and he said that we need a good enough caretaker. Yeah. Nobody yeah. has to be perfect. But if I fall down four times and three times you're there for me, I'll probably overlook that other one. <laughs> okay? Um, but And they talk about it even in our adult life. If we have a, a, partner, a partner we feel secure with, we go out every day and explore the world. But we know we have this secure base to come back to. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. And people who had a secure base will attach much more easily and, as Craig says, with fewer problems than those who did not. Yeah. And it's interesting, I, was, I saw some statistics when I was working on this presentation saying that 55% um, of the population has a secure attachment. The only thing I can say is I have not met that 55%. If it's that high, I will be a very happy woman. I, when you said that to me, I, I was like, no way. Yeah. And one of my other friends who's been a therapist for years said, I don't think it's that high either. Yeah. We wish it were, and in a good world it would be. Yeah. But I think it's closer to like 30%. <laughs> yeah. We don't know. Um, Just an but, estimate of my but guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but on the other hand, we're therapists, so we see the people who are struggling more often than others. Sure. Do. So, um, anyway. This is another gentleman I was reading who offers some suggestions, now I know this sounds kind of crazy, so bear with me, on how to increase your own secure attachment now that you're a grown-up. Mm -hmm. Okay? And this is going to directly tie to your confidence level yes. and how you handle yourself in a right. romantic relationship. Yep. The more secure you are and become, the more you're going to exhibit qualities of magnetic people yeah. that are attractive and fun yeah. and they're more present and emotionally available in their relationships. And overall confident in themselves and the world. Okay. Mental health, yeah. they're all tied to this. I, absolutely, um, absolutely. Um, this gentleman suggests that we try positive admiration cards. Now, affirmation cards. Now, I've seen that suggested for other things, but it makes more sense to me to use it for this, because in reality, what this gentleman is suggesting is that we can say some of the things to ourselves that our parents never said in an attempt to increase our feelings of safety and reliability. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I'm going to read you a little bit of this. Um, a positive affirmation is a short positive statement like, I am lovable, or I am a worthwhile person. Or Coach Craig is the best coach on the planet. Oh, absolutely. Um, yes. I like that one. I like that one too. And it doesn't matter in the beginning if you believe it or not. Mm -hmm. But of course you believe it because oh, it's yeah. true. Oh, no, it is true. Yes. It's true. Um, now, I know that sounds kind of crazy, because I'm going to end up telling you to get little index cards and write positive <laughs> affirmations on them and read themselves and read them to yourself every day. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that sounds crazy. I do understand that. 
If you are like many people, you have had a steady stream of negative thoughts running through your head for years. You're unconscious. Yeah, or your self-talk. Mm -hmm. You know, we're always thinking to ourselves, you know, well, here I am doing this, or here I am doing that, or there's that, or whatever. I mean, you may have had a parent that always said negative things, Absolutely. which we've talked about, how powerful your parents' words are. You're never going to amount to anything, oh. and then you make it happen. And you make it happen. Um, if there's one thing I'm still mind-boggled about after being a therapist for 35 years, it's the power of parents' words to children. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, these negative tapes, I realize this is an old fogey metaphor, these negative tapes play in the background like nagging chatter. By reading affirmation cards, often you will simply be recording a new tape. Okay? That's right. Um, no, I'm not grubby. No, I'm not crabby. No, I'm not demanding. I'm amazed at the number of people who tell me that their parents told them they were too needy or they wanted too much. I mean, I, I'm thinking of a, of a deaf woman I worked with at one time, and she couldn't hear at age three. And her mother got wow. angry at her and said, you're just too needy. I can't handle you. Wow. What a thing to say to a kid. Yeah, that's horrible. Yeah. Um, Oh, oh, and there's no end to some of the bad stuff you hear. I wish you were never born. Um, it was your father who wanted you. It goes on and on. Yeah. Um, and while kids may not understand every word, they sure understand your tone of voice. Oh, they do. Yeah. Okay. So we've got some positive affirmations we've to suggest We've got some positive here. affirmations. Um, you already have the first one down. Craig is the best yeah. therapist in all of the world? Well, I said relationship coach. Okay. I'll let you be the best therapist. I'll, I'll be the best therapist. You'll be the best. Yeah, okay. That sounds reasonable. Now, says this guy, this is a psychologist named Ms. Dr. Shorey, S-H-O-R-E-Y. He said, if you don't think that repetition results in new tapes being recorded, consider this. I can sing the Pepsi commercial song from 1976 word for word. Okay. Um, now, you may not all be old, old enough to do that, but I can also, and I think they played it at two second intervals on the radio, mm. but his point here is to tell you that repetition makes you remember. Mm. Yeah. He goes on to talk about the advertisement for Life Cereal, which again, I remember, I don't know how many of you do. I had something funny happen today. The, the one guy I did a call with today, he started our call by whistling my theme song. Which is? You oh, you have theme song, yeah. 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 For the, <laughs> nobody had done that before. That's funny. <laughs> he got nervous and he and he couldn't yeah. whistle, <laughs> but he tried. It that was, was cute. Um, but there was a life life cereal commercial, and there was a little red-headed kid named Mikey, and the, this shows a couple of kids and they're saying, "Let's give it to Mikey. He hates everything. Give it to Mikey. And he likes it." Yep. Um, and the whole ad was, "Mikey likes it." Um, so the guy is saying he remembers this nonsense just because it was repeated and repeated and repeated yeah. and repeated. So in case you don't believe that this works, um, he's just pointing out that it does work. Um, so what do you think? Can you imagine yourself writing down on your... Think about the, ne the last negative thing that was said to you. Um, that was said to you. What's a negative thing? Um, you're too needy. Uh, I'm not sure I want to be in a relationship with you. You're too needy. You always want something. Um, so what would the opposite of that be? I'm a reasonable person. When I ask for something, it's only because I need it. Okay? And we shouldn't have to apologize for needing. But that's one of the major ones that people remember hearing. Yeah. Um, you need too much. In other words, you, you take up too much of my attention. Yeah. Okay? And add to that the crazy circumstances some people live in, okay? They could be on welfare, they could have no money, um, all kinds of crazy things could happen. They could live in an unsafe neighborhood, um, mother could be distracted by a very ill child, all kinds of things can happen, okay? So most people look at you like you've got three heads. You say, you think I'm going to write on little index cards, um, I'm the best person in Kissimmee. Um, I'm the smartest person in Orlando. I'm the most charming person you've met today. All the good things, and one of the things I have done for years, but I never took it this other step, is that I would ask people to write down 
the negative things they remember their parents saying to them. Wow. And this is a difficult exercise. Yeah. And as Craig says, you'll never amount to anything is one of the top ones. Okay? I know you'll be a slut or a whore. Ooh. Yeah. I know you'll be in juvenile hall, which we don't have anymore. Um, and one of my favorites was the woman kept saying to the kid, I know that as soon as you turn 13, you're going to want to hang out on the street corners and impregnate girls. But she didn't say it that politely. So what do you think he did when he was 13? Wow. He went to the corner and did exactly what his mother told him. So words are so, so important. But if you want to do that, do it that way, you can. If you can write down some of the negative thoughts that you, your parents left you with, um, you know, and then we can look at unsaying them in the affirmation. Yeah. Okay. And how you felt. When and they how said you them. felt when that was said. Right. Yeah. So, so the idea is to say to yourself um, the things, the the good supportive things that your parents, for whatever reason, didn't or couldn't say. Okay. Yeah. It's a novel idea, but I like it, and it's a concrete thing to do. How many do you think they should do? Um. I would start with five and set a goal for ten. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. I'm a worthwhile person. Maybe you could put the ca the cards randomly, like one in your car. Sure. On one a mirror. In, one in the bathroom mirror. Yeah. One in the bathroom. Right. One, you know. Yeah, there, yeah, you can put them anywhere. And I mean, this is not a novel, this is not a new idea. Um, but using it to really increase your sense of a secure base and a predictable world Mm -hmm. is a new idea, and I liked it. Um, and I don't see that you could ever, ever hurt anything. Um, I remember when I was a kid, people used to say, you don't compliment your children too much because they'll get a swelled head. Yeah. Whatever that is. Do you know what that is? I don't know what that is. But I have never seen a case of that happening. I've never seen mm -hmm. anybody become narcissistic because they treated themselves well. Or their okay? child. <laughs> yeah, or their child, right. You're treating um, that child too well. Yeah. He's going to get a swelled head. Don't tell him he's good at anything. Yeah. Oh, look, little Joey is very mechanical. Don't tell him that. He'll think he's smart. That would be a that's good thing. That's how you build your child's self-esteem. That's, how you, self -esteem that's how you build your self-esteem. And that's going to directly correlate to how they feel in their romantic relationships. Because we go directly from the first love of our lives, which was our caretakers, the first loves of our lives, which is our caretakers, and we carry that baggage pretty much into our romantic relationships. Yeah. However, there is a way to upgrade, okay? If you have an anxious attachment disorder, you can, you can literally say to yourself, I'm exaggerating how dangerous the world is. I'm exaggerating, exaggerating how unpredictable I think people are. They're not all that unpredictable, mm -hmm. you know? Um, even if my parents were there for me one day and not the next. Yeah. Loved me one day and yelled at me the next. Okay? Yeah. All right. All these things can help you to grow. And you can learn to be your own positive motivational coach. Many of us have been criticizing ourselves for years without restraint. When you do this, you strengthen the negative and anxiety-provoking pathways in your brain. Yeah. So being self-critical is in no way helpful. Beating yourself up. Yeah. Um, you, you must refuse to beat yourself up. And many of us, for some reason or other, are very inclined to do that. Especially in a breakup. We are yes. like, oh, oh, this is all my fault. It's all my fault. Yeah. If I had done, if I had done, if I had done. Um, yeah, this guy points out that uh, if you say nice things to yourself, it does not mean that you will become a deluded narcissist thinking that you're perfect and wonderful. It's very, I think it's pretty close to impossible to get any, any human being to see themselves as perfect. Okay? Yeah. Um, but yes, refuse to criticize yourself. Practice saying things like, I can do this, I am as skilled as anybody else in this room, and at least as smart. Can you imagine being able to say that to yourself in a meeting? Mm -hmm. You know? Um, learn to talk to yourself. Believe it or not, um, many people never talk to themselves. I remember I had a kid in therapy one time. He was an adolescent and he was very funny and really very charming. And um, 
he called himself Washington after George Washington. He'd come in to see me and he'd say, well, during this week, three or four times, I had to say, Washington, you just did another dumb thing. Right? And so I told him he was doing well to be talking to himself. So he'd come back the next week and say, Washington, you did two good things this week. And then he'd name them for what they were. I'll never forget him. He, he really kind of had the idea down. Yeah. Um, yeah, learn to talk to yourself. Um, and they say if you're not used to, uh, some people don't think in sentences. I do. Do you? Yeah. Do you think in sentences? Yeah. But I guess not everybody does. And what are they thinking? Grunts and moans? Uh, well, pictures, I think. Um, or maybe sort of half a phrase. But mm -hmm. anyway, in order to get beyond that, here's an exercise you can do. Do a narrated walk where you, you start in your house and you say everything out loud, if you can. Um, that, so there's no one there who's going to call the little men in the white coats for you. Um, while you're still in your house, start it. Say everything out loud um, that you see and experience. I'm getting up and walking over to the door. One, two, three, four steps. I'm putting my hand on the doorknob. If I'm walking outside, it's bright out, but it's still chilly. Just to give your sense the self, give yourself the sense of talking to yourself and describing things. Okay. Um, now this one um, does cause a number of people to kind of go off the edge. We want you to talk to yourself in the mirror. <laughs> Okay? Go into a room where you will have a reasonable expectation of privacy. Yes, you certainly will. Um, look at yourself in the mirror, look right into your eyes, and as genu genuinely as you can, say, I love you. Can you look in the mirror and say, I love you? Sure. Of course you can. Right. I do. You do. Of course you do. And you should. Uh, but they mean it. And mirroring is another thing that happens between baby and child. Um, you mean so, baby and parent? Baby and parent, yes, I just <laughs> finally got that right. Um, where sometimes the parent will reflect back to the child the activity they've done. So mirroring can be very important. So I know it sounds nuts, but you want to get your face, literally your face, inside you where it can continue to say to you, you're a wonderful little boy, Craig. You're just great. I'm glad you came along. Why don't you like that stupid Cocker Spaniel? <laughs> um, try it. Remember, your emotional system doesn't know whether it's your mother talking or you. So you can fool your emotional system as to where these wonderful words are coming from. Wow. Okay? It's a lot to think about. It really is. But it? it could really help. It could help. Because you're trying to... You're trying to change your narrative. And it's yeah. so important, yeah. especially when you're going through a hard time, like a breakup, and your narrative is to beat yourself up and possibly take all those words that your ex had told you... Along and, with your parents. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I talked to a guy today that really felt guilty about the breakup uh -huh. because she told him it was all his fault. Oh. And you know I've been through a situation like yes. that too with yes. one of my exes. Yes. They, you believe that. You believe that everything that they're saying is true. And you actually will believe it over your own reality. Yes. And yes. it can be really powerful. And this is one of the ways to become really invested in your own reality. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have to trust that when you're that little kid and your parents will be there for you, they're also not going to lie to you. They're going to tell you the truth. And what you remember is true, and everything that you say is true. But people out there, there are some very brilliant manipulators who can make people think that white is black and black is white. Yeah. Yeah. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for that. Right. you got to trust yourself. Your more reality than is your reality. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was talking with someone today who said, you know, she'd been told by any number of people that her husband was right and she was wrong. And believe me, he wasn't right. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. I also, again, talked with somebody today who was feeling terribly guilty about her last breakup and was trying to think of ways to make it up to this man. Wow. Uh, yeah. And I think he would have been satisfied with them parting on reasonable terms. He would have been perfectly happy with that. Yeah. So I know it sounds kind of crazy, and there's nothing wrong with you if you think it's kind of crazy. Okay? 
But, but what if you try it? Yeah. And what if you feel better? Yeah. Something to think about. Well, this guy who wrote this article says that, you know, he has lots of, of people who can't bring themselves to look at themselves in a mirror and say, I really love you. Mm -hmm. um, but he said, if it's that meaningless and silly, why can't you do it? <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> and, but it is sometimes very difficult to say something against what your parents have said. Okay? You're a terrible person. You're too needy. You're demanding all the time. Well, are you going to say, I'm a good person, I'm not needy, and I'm reasonable in all my requests? Well, you're disagreeing with your parent. That's okay now that you're a grown-up. Mm -hmm. Right? Absolutely. In fact, it's part of your job as a grown-up. Yep, absolutely. Okay. And that goes along with confidence. Yes, it does. When you believe in yourself more than what other people tell you is true. Yeah. Well, we, yeah, absolutely. Social feedback is from parents, and when it's too negative, it can do a number on you for a lifetime. Absolutely. Any suggestion that there's a way to reverse that process, I'll try. Mm -hmm. So, Craig, after we finish this, we're going to go get our index cards. That's right. We're going to put them, them all over the place. We're going to put them all over the place. <laughs> okay. All right. So give it a shot and leave some comments below and let us know how it works for you. If you notice any changes in a week or a couple weeks, maybe they'll start those you know, messages. Maybe if the idea goes, if you say it enough times, you'll start to believe it. Absolutely. Okay? So You are all wonderful people. That's it. You sure about that? Yeah. Okay. As long as you're sure. Yep. I trust Margaret. All right. So if you want to get our help personally, just go to my website, AskCraig.net. You can sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching. I do Skype coaching. If you got to get with me right away, I do offer emergency Skype coaching. Margaret is also available for Skype coaching. So please feel free to sign up. Just click on Margaret on the top of the website, and that's how you can sign up with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon. Hi, I'm Coach Margaret, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist with 35 years experience. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me to get professional help on your situation. Go to AskCraig.net to sign up for a personal coaching with me.